This week, Jeff Johnson goes to his first truck camper rally and checks out all the happenings, sees what's new, and visits with other truck camper enthusiasts. Later, Jeff dresses up his truck camper 50 style with some great pinstriping done by a well-known pinstriping legend. It seems we keep seeing news articles on people getting snake bites this summer. This week, Dr. Fitz explains what to do if your pet gets bitten while you're out camping. Then, Mark Polk from RV Education 101 gives us some great insight into buying a used RV. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. Greetings, I'm Jeff Johnston for RVing Today TV. We're here at beautiful Campers West Campground in Warrington, Oregon for a truck camper owner rally. Just about every type of RV out there has gatherings for that specific type of RV. And the same is true for truck campers. So we're here to attend a rally, a regional rally, that has uh, a bunch of truck camper owners getting together, hanging out, having fun. Let's go and take a look and see what they do. Okay, so we're here in Warrington, Oregon for the NACCOA rally. That's North American Truck Camper Owners Association. And we had a good turnout the rally. Uh, NACCOA, what NACCOA is, is a group of truck camper owners and also manufacturers that we're like-minded like -minded people who like to get together, uh, exchange ideas. All kinds of campers, from fold downs to high-end hard sides, are welcome at the rally. This is a great opportunity to take a look at some other brands and models and talk to the owners about their experiences. Socializing and swapping ideas with other like-minded RV owners is part of the fun of a truck camper rally. Each day they have group activities planned and the kids are always included. A chili cook-off was part of the rally, so naturally we had to take part. We are taking part in the chili cook-off tonight. So I am making a white, um, a white bean chili with chicken. And I throw a little bit of onions and carrots in there for color. I think people will like it. A little bit of flavoring never hurts. And um, for this particular chili, I'm adding a, um, a jerk type seasoning. So it's not really like a chili bean seasoning, but it's a jerk and it'll add kind of a, a nice Jamaican kind of taste to it, I think. We'll hope for the best. The white bean and chicken chili is just about ready for the contest. We'll see how we, we do. We didn't win, but the eating was terrific. I believe I found the spicy one. Whew. Good stuff, though. Happy hour in the late afternoon and morning Bloody Marys, hosted by the rally sponsors, are part of the plan. A standard rally feature is camper manufacturers or parts suppliers displaying their wares for attendees to browse and perhaps make some future purchase plans. We saw this new side door flatbed camper from our friends at Rugged Mountain and heard a few words about it from the manufacturer. So this flatbed has a few unique features. This is a triple side unit. It obviously goes on a flatbed truck, uh, mounts with five bolts on each side. Uh, it's a center island triple slide as I stated. A uh, big unique feature in this one also is the bunk bed system. So with my two kids, the wife and I still have a place to sit in the back. Uh, great layout, wet bath, or dry bath, sorry. Uh, big holding tanks, it's, it's got it all. We're still working on the prototype to soon put it in a production unit. 
Hello, I'm Jared Sund with Stable Camper. Uh, my wife and I are the founders of this small company. We build products specifically for truck campers, slide in truck campers like you see here behind me. We do stability systems for when the camper's on the ground, but we also do, um, we do truck camper bed kits. So we've partnered with CM Beds mostly for uh, class four and class five trucks, for cab chassis trucks to build out um, a product like you see here. So we, we supply boxes and camper mounting systems to mount your slide-in truck camper to a flatbed, creating a system like this. Rally attendees can check out cool products like these Camper Jack stabilizers. Our stability product here at Stable Camper is designed to use when the camper is off the truck. So many campers will rock and shimmy and sway while you're using it off the, off the truck. So this product is boxing the front jack to give it stability. So while you're in the camper, while it's sitting on the ground instead of on the truck, it's very stable. And it's a simple system. We use a, we call it a side tube that connects the front jack back to the rear tight end of the camper. And then we use a front uh, tube that connects back to the body of the jack. And that just stabilizes this front jack and eliminates any sway or motion of the camper side to side or front to back. They're also easy to use and easy to store. So they simply swing around and store on the front of the truck or on the front of the camper for storage and then the side tube store underneath the wing so it easily goes into storage when you're on the truck. Camper owners have a variety of reasons they attend rallies and why they own a camper for that matter instead of another larger RV type. So we've had a truck camper going on four years this upcoming August. We live in it full time. We chose a truck camper because of its size and convenience. We can hide away pretty much anywhere, whether it's a downtown street or way out in the woods where the big fifth wheels can't go. We'll be back with more about the Natcoa Truck Camper Rally after these messages. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax. Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Let's continue our look at the Natcoa Truck Camper Rally in Warrenton, Oregon. We'll hear from more owners regarding why a camper, among all the other RV types available, is right for them. Yes, we've had this camper for over 10 years and uh, we had tried uh, tent trailers, uh, C-Class motor homes, and uh, we thought it would be so much easier with a pickup truck, put the camper on, and you're able to go so many places, easier to park, and we really feel it uh, just makes traveling easier. And I have no problems setting up daily. Sometimes we just stop, stay the night, go on. So it has worked well for us, and we're gonna continue. We've had several truck campers over the past 10 or 12 years. We've been Everywhere. About everywhere. Except Hawaii. Every except state except Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> um, we absolutely love it. it. Gives us a lot of versatility. Um, in the big picture, we're a short wheelbase, so we can get into anywhere, almost anywhere. Very tight spots, um, and the boondocking is amazing because we are not dragging a lot of camper behind us, um, and it keeps our life simple. Uh, it's like trying to put, you know, 25 pounds in a 10 pound sack. So you got to do the best you can do. Um, we absolutely love it. Um, wouldn't trade it for the world. And it's something we've been dreaming about for years anyways, like since we've been married, which was what, 37 years ago. 
So, <laughs> right? <good> right? <laughs> Shopping for a new RV? A truck camper may be just what you need. It was a typical beautiful night with a modest pre-fire season campfire at the Oregon coast. Just what we needed after a busy day at the rally. We enjoyed our first truck camper rally and hope to attend again one day. For more information about the North American Truck Camper Owner Association and camper rallies, log on to our website at rvingtoday.tv. Now, let's catch up with Jeff and legendary pinstriper Herb Martinez, the line doctor, as he applies his skills to Jeff's truck camper. Hi, I'm Jeff Johnston for Rolling On TV. You know, RVers really enjoy decorating their vehicles in different ways, so they don't look like any other on the road. For example, we decided to go with the full body wrap on the side of our Palomino camper, but that left the back as a blank canvas, still white. We decided to go with an old school type of decoration, which is pinstriping. And there's no better source for pinstriping than Herb Martinez, the line doctor. It all starts with cleaning the surface measuring and laying out the rough pattern guidelines. Next, the magic begins. Herb Martinez has been pinstriping for more than 50 years. He learned from the best during his early days and rubbed shoulders with the classic pros in the business. His extensive resume includes many happy customers, magazine feature vehicles, and industry accolades. State-of-the-art brushes enable fine applications, and quality paint ensure the lines are durable in a motor vehicle application. While not exactly a lost art, there are relatively few people still practicing this craft. It's a terrible cliche to say, it takes a steady hand, but Herb's steady hands have been doing their thing for a long time. Sometimes it doesn't take much to dress up an RV. The otherwise bland Palomino back wall now looks like something extra special. Well, Herb, this is beautiful. Thank you. This is exactly what the, this, this camper needed to be able to dress it up and, you know, make it stand out from the others. And it's a real honor to have some Herb Martinez pinstriping on our camper. Thank you very much. Can you describe, what do you, what do you call this particular style of lines? This is called a rainbow feather. These are feathers coming out from here. This is a big, gigantic feather right there. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing those things for 45 years. Well, it certainly makes our camper look, in my opinion, better than just about every other camper out there on the road. Thank and you, sir. Thank you again. And for more information, <laughs> log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Off the road adventure camping to luxurious full time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcole RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcole.com. Welcome to RVing Today's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz, and this is Sammy. Today we're going to be discussing the dreaded snake bite. In certain parts of the country, snake bites aren't much to worry about. In the Midwest, for example, there are a few snakes that are bold enough to bite a human or pet, and even then, the bite itself isn't much to worry about. However, in many areas of the country, humans and pets alike have run-ins with snakes that can cause severe damage and even death with a single bite. Although we might know how to avoid snakes ourselves, our dogs and cats are not as fortunate. 
Many dogs and cats suffer snake bites as a result of hunting behavior and general curiosity. Often owners witness the snake biting their pet or hear their pet whining after they've been bitten. So what should you do if your pet may have been bitten by a snake? The best thing is to get your pet to a veterinarian ASAP. Field first aid generally provides little benefit for the pet in these situations. Having a list of emergency vet hospitals with you on your trip can be helpful in getting your pet care faster. If your pet has actually killed the snake, bring it to the hospital with you in a sealed container in the event that the veterinarian needs to ID it. The type of snake that bit your pet can make a big difference in the outcome of the situation. However, if the snake is alive, do not endanger yourself and risk a bite. Try to get a look at what the snake looks like if possible, but otherwise, leave it alone. Why are snake bites so dangerous to us and our pets? Certain species of snakes are venomous, meaning that they're able to inject a toxin into their target with their fangs. Each species of snake may do this in a different way, and venom can cause a variety of illnesses in the victim. Some venoms are neurotoxic, meaning they cause paralysis or other types of nerve damage. Some are cytotoxic, meaning they cause severe tissue damage. And finally, some are hemotoxic, meaning they can cause widespread bleeding or clotting. This is why identifying the snake can be helpful for treatment. It gives the vet an idea of what to expect in your pet. So what does treatment for a snake bite look like? The veterinary care team will first stabilize your pet, meaning they'll address any shock, bleeding or clotting issues, and do any wound care that your pet may need. Then they may monitor your pet for at least the next 24 to 48 hours, looking for any of the side effects that can happen with the specific venom. There are antivenoms available for several different types of venom, but they're not always available for the vet and they do not always work. Keep in mind that the prognosis for a pet after a snake bite is highly variable. It depends on the size of the pet, the location of the bite, and the type of snake. Smaller pets and bites to the chest or belly can actually have a worse prognosis. So how can you, as an owner, prevent a snake bite for your pet? First, if you're in an area with high snake activity, keep your pet leashed at all times when on trails. Keep your pet connected to the RV with the leash hooks when you're at the campsite. Some dogs can actually be trained to avoid snakes, which can be immensely helpful, but most dogs are not trained for this. The main piece of advice is to keep yourself safe so that you're able to help your pet in an emergency situation. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rvingtoday.tv. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz, this is Sammy. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. Want more RVing Today? Then visit rvingtoday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Bedford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. Sometimes a used RV can be a great buy. Used RVs have already suffered the brunt of depreciation. Many are only lightly used at a good price and you will more than likely have an affordable monthly payment. But on the other hand, a used RV could be a disaster if you don't know what to look for. Here are a few important checks to make prior to purchasing a used RV. Number one on my list is to check the RV thoroughly for water damage. Water damage is quite common on used RVs. There are several reasons for this, but the leading cause is seams and sealants on the RV flex and move until there's a small crack or opening that water can penetrate. If the previous owner did not inspect and reseal these seams and sealants, chances are there's some water damage. 
Another problem is water damage can be difficult to detect. All the seams and sealants on the RV roof and sidewalls need to be inspected. Indicators of leaks on the exterior are soft spots on the roof, cracked or separated sealants, and soft spots or what looks like bubbles on the sidewall of the RV where the fiberglass delaminates from the backing. Anywhere the manufacturer cut an opening in the roof or sidewalls is prone to water leaks. On the interior of the RV, you can detect water damage by signs of staining or discoloration, soft spots around windows, slide outs, inside cabinets, or on the floor. Water damage is expensive to repair, especially if it had time to spread. I would avoid buying a used RV that has water damage. I've looked at many used RVs we were considering purchasing and never made it past the water damage check. Getting past the water damage check is a good sign, and you can move on to the next item on my list, which is checking all the systems and appliances on the RV for proper operation. This check includes the water system, the LP gas system, the electrical system, and every appliance in the RV. If you are buying it from an RV dealer and they tell you the RV will go through a pre-delivery inspection or PDI prior to delivery, let them know you want to know what items are included in the inspection and anything they find wrong during the inspection. If you are buying from a private owner, any inspections conducted will be on you. If you are not comfortable performing these inspections, hire a qualified RV inspector to perform the inspections for you. If for any reason the owner does not cooperate with any of these inspections, I would not purchase the RV. Remember, there is no warranty and replacing almost any appliance in the RV can cost $1,000 or more. This can add up quickly. Motorized RVs with an engine and transmission and rear axle need to be inspected too. If you're not comfortable inspecting the drive line, try to find an RV inspector who's qualified to do this. You want to inspect the underside for evidence of leaks, check the condition of the belts, radiator hoses, and heater hoses. Check all of the fluid levels to make sure they are topped off and the fluid is clean. Ask the owner for maintenance records you can review. You need to drive the RV before you buy it. When you drive an RV, check the engine, transmission, and brakes for proper operation. Turn the windshield wiper on, check the air conditioner, the heat, the radio, and other controls on the dashboard. It is usually easy to tell if an RV was taken care of or if it was neglected. I would avoid any RV that shows obvious signs of neglect. Do not forget the tires. It's not uncommon for RV tires that look okay to be very old. Tires that are six years old or older need to be inspected by a tire professional. If there is visual evidence of weather cracking or checking caused by exposure to the elements, it's likely the tires need to be replaced. This can be expensive, especially if it's a motorhome. Make sure the used RV you're considering meets your needs. Is it large enough or small enough? Do you like the floor plan arrangement? Is there adequate storage inside and outside? Are there enough sleeping arrangements? Are the holding tanks large enough for the way you plan to use the RV? These are just a few considerations. Think about how you plan to use the RV and make sure the used RV you are considering to purchase fits the bill. If it's a travel trailer or fifth wheel trailer, do you have the vehicle that can safely tow it? Buying another tow vehicle can be an expensive proposition. Some RV owners owe more on the RV than it's worth. They need to pay the loan off and they want to sell it for the payoff amount, at a minimum. Don't overpay for a used RV. There is an RV addition to the National Automobile Dealer Association, or NADA, guide. This is the appraisal guide most RV dealers use to determine used RV prices and values. The online NADA guide offers low retail and average retail pricing on used RVs. Prices in the guide assumes everything on the RV works as it should and the RV is in good shape. I always tell people you wouldn't buy a new RV for full retail price, so you shouldn't pay full retail price for a used RV. Ask what the price is and try to negotiate the price closer to the low retail price in the NADA guide. If everything on the RV works properly and you can get the price somewhere between low and average retail, it's probably a fair deal for both you and the seller. Happy camping.
You can watch the full uncut version of many of these stories along with other additional videos, stories, and news on our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.